Who wouldn't want to invest as successfully as Warren Buffett? Well, not many people, I suspect. The so-called Sage of Omaha is now an octogenarian and uh, has been declared in the past 2008 the world's richest man, chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, a company that makes investments and has basically made Warren Buffett very rich. He's famous for early stage investments in Coca-Cola, Gillette, Amex, and uh, plenty of other household names. So who wouldn't want that kind of track record and how would you go about getting it? Well, today's video is how you can basically learn from Warren Buffett. It's quite difficult to be Warren Buffett in today's market. So you don't want to believe anyone who says you can be the next Warren Buffett because frankly, a lot of his gains were made in the early days. He's now so famous, it's difficult for him to move without other investors leaping on his every word. He has to time his investments quite carefully because otherwise the word gets out that he's about to invest and everybody rushes in and you get a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy in a way that I don't, all right? When I find myself a nice little investment, the only person who gets excited about it is my mum and she doesn't know anything about it anyway. So how do you invest like Warren Buffett? Let's have a look at his key investing principles, all right? We're not trying to turn you into Warren Buffett. We're saying there are clearly some valuable lessons you can draw from his letters to shareholders over the years as to how he goes about it, all right? So we're gonna focus on one particular aspect of Warren Buffett's investing style. It's called, not surprisingly, his rule number one of investing. And it's very simple, it's this, don't lose money. And being an amusing chap, uh, his rule number two of investing is C rule number one. All right. Now, the reason it matters is down to maths, and then we'll talk about how you do it. All right. Why is it so important not to lose money? I mean, it sounds ridiculous to have to prove it, but it's because the losses are really, really hard to recover. Okay. Just give you one example. If you currently hold an investment and it drops 30% in value tomorrow morning, mathematically, you need it to rise 43% just to get back to where you started from. All right, that's the maths of losses. So Buffett was onto something when he said, don't lose money, but okay, good. So how do you not lose money when you buy shares? And the answer to Warren Buffett was, you look for good companies at cheap prices. And there are two vital words that go together there, a good company at a cheap price. No point in finding a bargain if it's a load of rubbish, all right? You don't just want cheap companies. Anyone can find cheap stuff that turns out to be jargon or rubbish, okay? What you want is good companies at a cheap price, okay? No point in buying a good company if it's expensive, if everyone else knows about it, all right? So the key, good company at cheap prices. The question we're gonna focus on right now then is what makes a good company? What made those Coca-Cola, Gillette, Amex investments quite so successful? Now you can't repeat those investments tomorrow because they've been done in one sense. Those are much bigger companies now, and maybe they're not as cheap as they once were. Maybe they don't have all these qualities. When you go rummaging around looking for stocks, trying to apply Warren Buffett's principles, um, what is a good company as far as he's concerned? Well, let's have a look at a few key investing lessons, investing the Warren Buffett way, okay? So, number one, you want companies with a high rocky, return on capital employed, and low debt. Now, high return on capital employed, that means they are generating annually lots of bang per buck, okay? I'm not gonna do a lot of detail, detail on return on capital employed in this video. Have a look at my related video, what is return on equity, but here's the concept, okay? Lots of bang per buck in profit terms combined with low debt, all right? and High return on capital employed, that just means if you take from a profit and loss account, profit before interest and tax, and put it over uh, debt and equity capital employed, that's the capital that's come from shareholders and the capital that's coming from lenders and banks. So one year's profit before interest and tax over total capital employed as a percentage, you get rocky. So in very simple terms, if that was 100 million from the profit and loss account, Sterling, that was 500 million, adding up shareholders' uh, funds and any interest-bearing debt employed by the business, 100 over 500 as a percentage is about 
Right, so Warren Buffett said you want high return on capital employed with low debt. So you want this to be low. So the interest bill on that debt is also low. And he's absolutely right. right? An awful lot of banks, for example, have driven up return on equity and return on capital employed by deploying gearing, debt, not adding any value. Warren Buffett was saying it's the value you want. It's the ability to, to generate proper operating profits, bang per buck, not some kind of financial alchemy based on borrowing lots of money. All right. So high return on capital, low debt. Now, for anyone thinking that's a bit quick on point one, because there's more points to come, all right, take a look at my return on equity video and also have a look at my um, how you can make money from gearing videos. And they'll explain those in a bit more detail. Right. That's point number one. He didn't get to be the world's richest man by just having one point. All right. So there are a few more tricks of the Warren Buffett trade, if you like. So there's point one. Point two, you want to find companies with predictable earnings. Now, Warren Buffett's broken his own rules a few times recently with one or two of his investments, but that's beside the point. Predictable earnings, you don't want any surprises. All right, You want companies that are going to be there day in, day out. And a feature of his portfolio is a lot of those shares have been there an awful long time. These are not fly-by-night companies that suddenly gone bust. These are not dot-com companies, for example. And Buffett famously avoided the dot-com boom and the share price rises that went with it, and also the dot-com bust and the pain that went with that. Okay, So steady, predictable earnings, and you want profits backed by cash flow. I'll put profits equals cash flow. Now, uh, analysts rather grandly call this cash cover, but you want to check, for example, that operating profits in the profit and loss account are not a kind of accounting mirage. You want to have a look at the cash flow statement and check that the cash from operations is in line with operating profit. Okay, cash cover is the idea there's lots of cash being generated for lots of operating profits. In other words, this and this bear some resemblance to each other. And Buffett likes that. Okay, he doesn't like firms where there's lots of profit being generated and virtually no cash. All right, for more on that, see why do profitable firms go bust? Not by Warren Buffett, by me. All right, so there's number three. Uh, number four. And um, there are only half a dozen of these, by the way. He liked businesses that were uncomplicated. Now, some would say, well, he didn't he just invest in Goldman Sachs? That's fairly complicated, some would say. Um, uncomplicated to you, all right? There's no absolute measure here. What Buffett was getting at was you must understand the business you invest in. Because if you don't, you're just playing the lottery. I mean, if you have no idea how the directors are doing it, what if they stop doing it? All right, you're stuffed, okay? So find businesses that you understand. All right, and a lot of people, it's an obvious point to make, didn't have any clue how dot-com companies were ever going to make profits, all right, um, let alone generate cash flow. And Buffett's point was the business doesn't have to be hugely complicated or hugely simple. The fact is you've got to understand how it's doing what it does. Okay? If you're an expert in financial derivatives, you will understand those businesses and you can invest in them. If you're not, you probably don't want to bother. All right? So uncomplicated as far as you're concerned. All right? Good example, you know, Gillette, one of um, Buffett's early investments. There's a product everyone understands, and there's a product everyone's probably seen. Okay, same with Coca-Cola. All right. Um, then you want a strong brand coupled with pricing power. Now, I'm going to use Gillette razor blades as an example, or the um, ink cartridge I recently bought for my printer at home as another example of what Buffett means. Lots of things have gone down in price in recent years, thanks to the Chinese. Um, clothing springs to mind, CDs. But anyone who shaves using Gillette razor blades, like me, will know somehow they managed to keep pulling off a remarkable trick. The price of those razor blades seems to keep going up. The little thing you attach them to doesn't. That's cheap, but the business model's clever. All right, the price of those razor blades keeps creeping up. And the way they do that partly is they say, well, you were shaving with two, now have three. Okay, so I'll pay more for those. All right, so they've got their ways of making sure that even in a recession, they maintain pricing power. Same with the people uh, quite often who make um, replenishment cartridges for printers. The printer is cheap, try and fill it up with anything, and you end up paying an arm and a leg. And you think, well, hang on a minute, this is more expensive than it was 12 months ago. What's going on? Where's the tech revolution here? 
right? Those are clever business models, right? and those are the sorts of things that Buffett was talking about. Pricing power. You can't suddenly just be undercut. And who can't suddenly be undercut? Strong brands. But you're more likely not to be suddenly undercut if you've got that sort of brand power. And Buffett, Buffett likes brand names, okay? He, you know, even in the financial investment market, I mean, Goldman Sachs, love them or loathe them, has quite a brand name, okay? Now, um, final point, um, there, are, there are others we could make, but management need to be owners of the business. Not 100%, all right? It's often not possible when a stock's listed, for example. I mean, if they owned 100%, how would you ever buy into it? But the point is, management need to have a high stake in the future of the business. All right, now, there's no science to this. It's a little bit art and science. There are two extremes when it comes to paying managers. You can pay them all cash, give them a massive salary, or you can pay them no salary and give them all shares or share options. Those are the two extremes, all right, and both have their drawbacks. Paying managers all in cash with no shares or share options in the business you want to buy into, they're just going to do what they need to do to earn their salary and nothing more, goes the argument. Give them all shares and share options, and all they'll do is try and boost the share price very short term, cash in and get out. All right? so, you, so those two extremes often won't work, as attractive they might seem superficially. So um, there is obviously a middle ground here, but what you don't really want is management not prepared to back their own decisions with their own hard cash. Okay? So when companies take a look at the arrangement for directors, are they required to put a certain amount, a percentage of a year's salary or something, into shares by a certain time? You know, what's the management scheme that gets them into buying shares in the company? Because if they own some shares, at least, they're likely to be more committed to doing what you want them to do, which is raise the share price, not just collect their salary and go home, if you see what I mean. All right, and there's the problem with bonuses as well. You know, a bonus is fine, it doesn't help you as a shareholder. All right? you know, a bonus doesn't have to have anything to do with share price increases. Look at banks recently. It can simply be um, part of the benefits negotiated by that particular director. All right? So Buff Buffett said, make sure that the managers are, to some extent, owners of the business you're buying into. All right? So there you have it. When you're buying shares, um, half a dozen key invest-like Buffett tips. Will these half a dozen tips turn you into Warren Buffett? No. There are historical reasons why he's the greatest investor of all time. Even he's found it more difficult to make money recently, almost by, by dint of who he is. Okay? But these will help you benefit from all of that cumulative investing knowledge and experience. And that is the way that Warren Buffett can help you in your day-to-day -day investing decisions.